Good morning. My name is Elaine Pendergrass and I'm head of school for Wesley Academy. I've also been a children's minister, I've also been a teacher, I've also been lots of things that deal with children. And so my passion is to help parents and those that work with children be able to educate their kids about Christian things, about their faith, about the Bible and things like that. So I'm going to start doing some videos to teach those sorts of things. This morning I was able to teach a group of preschool children in our preschool chapel, which we do every single Monday, and today it was Tuesday since we were out of school, and I talked about the walk to Emmaus from Luke 24. So, of course, I hold up the Bible first, and I say, my special story is coming from this book. What is this book called? And the kids go, the Bible, and they know the B-I-B-L-E song and all of that. Of course, with preschoolers, I don't read directly from the Bible. I summarize it because it would be too lengthy for them to understand, and I need to have my eyes out looking at what they're doing and helping them rather than having my eyes down. So I hold the Bible in my lap or my phone if I'm looking at my phone for the Bible and I tell them the story. So today again the story was about the walk to Emmaus which is apropos since it's after Resurrection Sunday. And so we celebrated last week we talked about what it means when Jesus died on the cross and raised from the dead in little kid language. Of course I don't talk about the blood and the yuckies and all that stuff I talk about how he took our sins upon himself, how he was on a cross, and his body was dead. It was put in a tomb, which is like a big cave. And one of the little girls said, and Brother Joseph put a, put a uh, stone over the cave. And I said, that's right. Joseph put a stone and made sure that everything was okay. You know, that sort of thing. So I acknowledge what they already know. And then we go on with the story. And then we talked about how on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus was raised from the dead. So uh, the story about the walk to Emmaus is about two men, I told them, who were walking along a road. They had returned from, they were in the process of returning from the Passover feast. I told the kids it was a big party, and they were walking along back home. Now, to illustrate this a little bit, I could have had two children actually walking, but sometimes with preschoolers, not that may not be the best idea since they could get a little distracted and start playing and all of that. So what I did is I brought some little people. And so you could use those, you could use Barbies, you could use stuffed animals. I chose to bring little people. And I actually brought two girls, even though then the story we assume it's men. Um, but I brought the two girls because it could have been a story about girls as well. And there were lots of followers about Jesus. So I had the two little girls walk along and talk. And I said, they were so sad. Show me your sad tears. And so the kids did like this. And they were sad because their friend Jesus had died. And they thought that he was going to be the one who came to save them, the one who came to make everything better, which preschoolers understand. And I told them that story. And, and I said, they were so sad and crying. And this person came up beside them. And I held up a little person. And I said, now, this is not who you might think it would be. I think he had on a hat or something like that. And I said, this is not someone you think it would be, just like they didn't think it was someone who is. But this was Jesus. And I said, I actually spelled it for them, which they didn't quite get until I said, J-E, and then they said Jesus. So a little bit of education thrown in there about letter sounds and their meaning. And, and so I had Jesus walk alongside, and we said, do, 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 as they walked. And they, uh, they learned that Jesus asked the people what they were talking about. And so Jesus listened, and of course they didn't know who is what they, who he was. Their eyes were closed, and they didn't understand. Not really closed, but figuratively closed, which you need to clarify for preschoolers. Um, but they didn't understand or know who he was, even though he had been their friend. And so along the way, after they tell them they're so sad, and they, they had heard the story, they had known this Jesus, who they thought was the one to come save them, and he had been put on a cross, and he was put in a tomb, and then they said, we're confused as well, because some of the women who followed Jesus came to us and said that his body wasn't there anymore, we just don't understand, and all of that. And then in the story, it tells us that Jesus used the scriptures to tell them about the Messiah. So of course, I got my Bible out, and I said, Jesus probably didn't have a Bible, but he knew these stories in the Bible about what um, what was coming alongside. So the things like how the Messiah was going to come and be born of a virgin, like how we celebrate at Christmas, Jesus would be born as a new baby, how he was coming to save and different things like that. 
And so then I said, but they still didn't recognize him. They still didn't know who he was. So they walked and walked and walked. And I had the two little guys stop and I sent Jesus a little bit ahead. And I said, and Jesus was about, he was pretending to go off, but his friend said, please stay with us, stay with us. And so I brought Jesus back. And then I told the kids that they did something that we do with our friends, which is eat. And so when they began to eat, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And from that point on, their eyes were open and they understood. But guess what happened next? Jesus disappeared. So I took the Jesus figure and moved him behind me. And I said, but the guys were so excited. They were so elated that they knew that Jesus was alive that they ran all the way back. And I had them literally come back to me. And they told all of their friends that Jesus is alive. Can you say that with me? And I said, Jesus is alive. And the kids said it with me. And so then we talked about how all these things are true. How Jesus took all of our sins on him and put them on the cross. Like the time when you told a lie. Like the time when you didn't obey your parents. Like the time when you didn't share with your friends. And I said, and Jesus put them on the cross. So we didn't have to pay for them. Jesus took all the sins away and made us clean on the inside. And it doesn't stop there. The good news is that when Jesus' body was dead, it was put in a tomb, but then he came back to life. God brought him to new life. And it's the same with us. Although preschoolers may not understand this fully, it's introducing thoughts for them so that one day as I begin to talk about making a decision to follow Jesus, they will know a little bit about how Jesus takes our bad choices, which I say with preschoolers, or our sins away and put them on the cross. And that he, when he took those away, he, can, he made us clean on the inside and forgave us and made us new. And just as his body came back to life, we can be new and clean on the inside and be forgiven. So that's how I equate it with little guys and girls. And so the end of the lesson was, go tell your friends that Jesus is alive. This is exciting news. And it's not just something that we talk about on Easter Sunday. It's not just something we talk about preparing for Easter Sunday. And I hope that you put more emphasis on the news of Jesus being, uh, being raised than you do on eggs and bunnies and all that. Although that's fun. We need to remember that this changed our lives. This is what Christianity is all about. It's the death and resurrection of Jesus that makes us have the chance to be forgiven of our sins and be made new. So as the children left, we sang our goodbye song after we prayed a prayer that I say it and they echo me, thanking God for sending Jesus to earth, thanking him for taking our sins away on the cross, and thanking him for new life. We also prayed that God would help us to remember to tell our friends that Jesus is alive. So my hope and my prayer for these little guys and girls is that they go on and tell their friends, I know why we had Easter, and then they explain the story. Or that they act out the story of this later when they play with little people. And it might be at a later date when I go into a classroom that I might sit down and act out the story with the children and let them finish. So this is an ongoing conversation. It takes a few minutes, but it lasts for an eternity. So I wish you well today as you talk to your personal children or as you talk to students in your classroom that you continue to get more and more comfortable teaching them, using practical things, using things that they understand to make it real, make the Bible, make the stories in the Bible and the story of Jesus' life real so that we can build little Christians that one day come to know Jesus fully. Have a wonderful day.